Hello, welcome to Marketing Matters, the show where we explore all things marketing and uncover those things that matter for you and your success. I'm your host, Denise Millay, and my hope and mission is to provide marketing and technology to you in a way that's useful without jargon, complexity, or confusion, so you can grow your business, expand your impact in the world, and live your best life. Today's episode is called Maximum Exposure for Your Podcast. And before we begin, I want to share a quote from Lawrence Lessing. He's a political activist, ethics studier, uh, knowledgeable in ethics and, and all things about what we produce in creations, etc. He says that creation always involves building upon something else. There is no art that doesn't reuse. So I wanted to share that with you today because I wanted to, we're going to talk about reusing content you create to support your business goals. And I want you to fight the feeling that you need to reinvent the wheel with everything you do. So let's move on. So we're talking about repurposing your podcast. And so we should really talk about what repurposing really means. Okay. Um, the dictionary, the definition of repurpose is to adapt for use in a different purpose. In our case, we're taking an asset, your podcast, and we're using it somewhere else. So it's not a, I'm trying to present this so you don't feel like we're just doing shallow things. There's a real purpose for taking this thing that you've worked so hard on and getting the most out of it, the most return on your investment. So there are three reasons that you want to repurpose your podcast on your websites. And that's your podcast is a huge investment. It's, it's, um, you've given hours and hours of resources, your time, your energy to produce this, right? And you have it on a platform and you've done an excellent job, but are you getting everything you can out of it? The other reason is that podcast lives on a different platform and you don't always have control over what traffic is being sent to the site, which podcasts are being promoted, um, whether you're getting all the visitors you should. So you get more insights if you put it on your site and you can monitor the visitor statistics on your site and drive more traffic to it. So you're, you're increasing the probability that someone will subscribe to your podcast if you have another way for them to view it. And the third reason is that search engine inclusion. Search engines index your website and podcast episodes and they provide more opportunities for your clients to find you. So let's unpack these, right? Your investment. Here are all the things that you go through to create your podcast, right? You schedule your guests, you plan your topics, you write your scripts, you do all the recording, whether it's with a guest or without. Then you do the editing and you add front cards and end cards and credits and all that stuff. Then you have to promote it on your social media and you might be buying ads for it to promote it or you might be getting sponsorships for it so you want it to put money into advertising so you can reap more sponsorship dollars. You have software investments on a monthly basis to produce the podcast and to get it listed out there on the internet and then all the equipment, the microphones, the, the, um, the soundboards, all those things that you have to do and that, that's a significant investment in time and resources. And so it's good business to wring every last opportunity to gain ROI or return on your investment, right? So platforms, okay, some other things to consider as we're saying the, the three things that, the three reasons. Well, the platforms, you, you don't know which podcast your platforms promote. And you don't know if your clients are on these platforms regularly right? The podcasting platforms are fantastic. They do a wonderful job for what they do. They, they make the podcast available. They distribute it across all the channels in the RSS feed and all that. But do they promote yours? And is it cataloged such that your folks are getting to see it? And do you know if your audience, whoever your prospective clients or customers are, are they using that platform and that service? You don't know, right? However, we do know that they use search. Everybody uses Google, right? It's a verb. 
And, um, you know, with the statistics we've talked about before, the 8 billion searches per day that Google handles, there's more likelihood that your potential clients and customers are using Google than they're visiting your podcast platform. So let's talk about the search engine thing, right? We've talked about it before in other areas, but let's talk about it. Really, your audience visits Google often. They really do. And we've talked about it. 90,000 searches per second. Most on average adults who use online services, Google, etc., three times a day they visit Google. And there is no other product that I can think of out there except for maybe email or Office, you know, Word or Excel or something like that where someone might visit something online three times a day. Well, maybe the news. Maybe the news is the other one because I check Google News and other news all the time. Anyway, the other thing that you get from search engines is, or one thing that you can do by putting your podcast on a search engine is when you update your website with new content on a regular basis, Google views your content more favorably. So they think of it as more fresh and relevant and potentially helpful and useful to their users, their people that are searching, because their goal is to serve up the most recent, most topical and helpful information they can. So if your site is continually updated, that gives you a favorable rating with Google. There are many factors they use to rate somebody. We won't go into that whole formula, et cetera. There's, there's tons of time for that in other episodes. But I will say that just by expanding your content to include something that's regularly updated, you help yourself in your rankings. And, it, and you reusing this content that you spend so much time and energy to produce and putting it on your website is just lending more credibility to you. It's providing more social proof that you have other things you're producing. It's giving more opportunity to talk about different topics that may not be included on your foundational pages on your website. So it gives more insight into your ideas, etc. And those get indexed, uh, which we've talked about before with these little programs that Google has. Go out and read all the pages, right? And they they look for keywords and they look for your link and your title and your description and they put that into their database. So when someone searches for those keywords that they find on the page, then you could be included in the search results. If your content is the most recent, authoritative, helpful, useful, and um, gets a lot of traffic. So, and also when someone goes to search for you individually or your company individually, you will have many pages of results that are about you. So the chance of them visiting you is stronger because they won't be diluted by other businesses. Um, there's tons of strategies we can talk about about search, but using your podcast is just one cornerstone of making your search engine inclusion stronger so that you have better chance of being included in search results. So the third item is it improves your chance to be delivered to potential clients as search results. So now we want to talk about your podcast on a website. How do we do that, right? Because you know how to put it on the platform after you produce it. You've studied all that. You've learned all those details. You've done all that work. We don't want to redo that work. We want to use that content and repurpose it on your website. So think about that. We're not rewriting it. We're not redoing it. We're just taking it and converting it to what a website needs. Okay? So there's three steps. <coughs> Excuse me. You need a main podcast page that connects to your main menu so that someone knows you have a podcast. And if they're interested, they can go to that page and they will see what they need to see about your podcast. And then every episode that you have, or the most recent season, if you have tons of seasons out there and the thought of doing them all is just too daunting, but if you wanna just do the most recent season, that's fine. Five, three, four, or five episodes, however many you want to do is gonna help you. The more you do, the better. But you know, this doesn't have to be an enormous task either. So one page per episode. You then need to connect to that main podcast page. 
and we'll talk about the details of that next. But the other thing you want to do is once you get the podcast page and all of the episodes connecting to it, you want to link your home page. You might want to put a box or a section of text that says, hey, my podcast is available and available now here. Take a look. Or uh, would you like to subscribe to my podcast? And take them to your main podcast page. And on that page, you, you have a subscribe button so that they can subscribe to your podcast. And it will be added to their podcast feed depending on if they listen to podcasts regularly. Um, some people don't understand that subscribe tech, you know, thought. So you don't want everything to be all about subscribing. You want to give them the opportunity to know that they can actually listen to your episodes on your website without having to go to another app or go to their phone or do whatever. So wherever they are, they should be able to access your podcast, but it is important to put it on your homepage. Now, if you have other pages about media on your site, let's say you have a video series or you do guest guest appearances that you've been on on other people's series or whatever, you want to make sure you include your podcast in any lists of media or schedules you might keep or things that you do to keep it relevant and up to date. So the more references you have to your podcast on the other pages of your site, the better your podcast is viewed as Google starts to to um, crawl your website, crawl, read your website, and see how everything gets connected. So to try not to, what I'm trying to say is don't create this podcast arm of everything and only have it in the main menu because somebody may not look there. They might just look at your homepage. So you want to make sure that wherever they are, they can get to your podcast. If it's not from a menu, it could be in the footer, it could be in the text, it could be anywhere. So think about that when you're when you're developing what you're going to do and your steps, okay? Let's talk about your main podcast page now. So you want to have a description of the podcast and importantly, why you created it and who it's for. So that if your visitor is your target audience, you're speaking directly to them, right? So I assume or you would hope that whatever you're doing your podcast on is relevant to your business and what you're speaking about and it's connected to the audience that you're trying to attract. And you want to make sure that whatever you put about your podcast, somehow you turn it into how it helps the people you're trying to attract, what it provides, um, what inspired you to start it, you know, however you can personalize it and turn it into something that is relevant to the visitor as opposed to just describing it. Sometimes podcast descriptions are very cold and very, you know, clear because they get repeated everywhere. So try to make it more personal and welcoming for the visitor who's visiting this page. Then on that main page, you want to include the latest, a link to the latest episode and a description of the latest episode. Okay. And this is going to have to change every time you release a new episode or every couple times so that you keep it up to date. And that's a signal to Google to reread this page. And that gives you help in your rankings. Then you also want to link to a list of all the episodes. So you can have a separate page for that, or you can have it down below. The, on the main page, but you want to have a list of the episodes that you're including on your website so that they can see the titles and those titles are going to help your search engine inclusion as well because they are going to reference pages and it's just going to lend authority to what you're doing. Then you, you are also going to have on this platform a link to the podcast platform where you live so they can subscribe to the podcast if they want to. Now one thing I didn't mention on this list is when you link to the latest episode in the info, often on your website platform there's an audio player that you can insert there so somebody just has to hit the play button. They don't have to go to Spotify or Apple Podcasts or Stitcher to actual or Captivate or wherever to play the podcast. You want to make sure that they don't have to leave your site. Okay. You can link the player to the recording on Spotify or whatever, but they aren't actually loading up the platform your, your podcast is on to play it. You have to provide a player that, that is seen on the page so that they can play it directly right there. Because we're always trying to keep people on our site and giving them more information about us to keep them on there as long as possible. 
we do link off to other things at times, but in this case, you could have multiple episodes and you want them to come back and forth between episodes to see if there's something they're looking for. And you don't want to make it difficult. So provide the link list, but whenever they click on a link to an episode, you want to make sure they see a player so they can actually just play it right there. And if you want more information about this, go to my website at dmalay.com and look at my, um, where did I put this? Actually, it's my video series has a player in it. And I'll find some other apps, um, links to other examples that I'll put in the comments later. So anyway, that's the main page for your podcast. Now we want to talk about the episode page. For each episode, you need a separate page. Now, I know that I've just told you to put the latest episode on the, on the main page, and that's right. So this could be a duplication of effort, but that's okay. Because every episode is going to end up with its own page. So let's say you have episode four on your main page, and here you have a separate episode page for episode four. Well, when you create episode five, you're not going to have to do anything with episode four. You're just going to replace that section on the main page with episode five and create episodes five page, five's pages. So it's going to work out in the end. So just follow my, follow my instructions a little bit here. On that episode page, you're going to have an image that's attractive for this episode. You've probably used it in social media posts or you use it in other things to represent the content. You want to repeat that here. You also want a description of the episode and who it's for. So again, turn the description into how it's relevant for the visitor. Try to make the language sound inviting for why they came to maybe listen to this topic. Okay. Try not to make it too cold and just a description. Make it more inviting. Then again, you're going to have a player and a link to the episode on the platform, but you want to play it on that episode page. Then what you want to do is provide a timeline or a section of text because see, the Google robot programs read text. They don't know what's in the audio that you're playing. So you have to provide some text that gives that context for what's in the episode. And sometimes people say, you know, at, at one minute in, we talk about X, Y, Z. At 2.05, we start talking about ABC. And just a short timeline of what's going on in the episode. If that doesn't work for you, you can get a transcript of it and take out sections or quotes from the text and include it there. Here's some, here's some of the ideas we, we covered in this, in this episode and just include the quotes there. That way, the Google Reader has text to read and index and put into its database. So however you do it, timeline or quotes, doesn't matter. You don't have to put the whole transcript of the entire episode. That's overkill and nobody will read the whole thing. That's too much work. But if you want to do you know, a couple of quotes per episode or a timeline, that is, that is just fine because it gives the highlights and the keywords and the things that you want Google to know. Okay. Now the next thing we're going to talk about are the links. So after you create all this stuff, right? You have all the list of episodes that you're going to include. You have a separate page for each episode. You have the main page. You want to create connections to the podcast from other content on your site. Okay. This sounds complicated, but let me give you an example. Let's say you're a marketing ex expert or you're a technology person like me. And I do an episode about search engine inclusion, right? And so I also have the services that I help people with their search engine uh, inclusion and their keyword research and other things. And that's one of my services. Well, if on my services page, I were to say, hey, if you want more information about how I deal with search engine inclusion, take a look at my recent podcast episode number whatever and link to that podcast page in your website. This provides another opportunity for Google to see the connection between things and also for your visitor, your potential customer or client to get answers to questions they may have immediately, right? 
So you, it's fine and well to say you do a service and I provide this service, but it's always great to give samples, right, of your work or your thinking or how you approach something. So everything that you have that you speak about or you write about or you record about, you should tie it to the services you do, the events you have, the places you go, the people you, you, you know, say you're a guest on, on a show or a summit. Here are some other things. That, here are some of the topics that I talked about on the summit. I also included them in my recent podcast and linked to the podcast, right? It's pretty easy once you start thinking that way in a broader web-like approach as opposed to just a top-down tree where you go from the main menu to five things to images and text. You want to think about it as a web in the center and you, you have a concept and you're going to link that to as many places as possible for maximum exposure and inclusion. Okay, so on the podcast platform itself, you want to try to go back and see if there's an opportunity for you to put your website address for your podcast page on that platform. And, you know, just like Facebook allows you to put in a web address or LinkedIn does, I'm sure some of the podcast platforms do. So make sure you do that as well. You might want them to just go to your home page, which is fine, or you might want them to go to directly to your podcast page for more information. You don't know. So give them the home page if you think that's what they're going to want. If you think they just want the podcast page, then go there. But make sure you have your website. So anyone who does go through that platform who wants more information about you can be directed to other sources. Then, obviously I talked about before to put the podcast on your main menu. Don't forget to do that because if it's not included on your menu somehow, nobody's going to know it's there. So let's say you only have a link for the, your blog right now or your video series or something else and you think you don't have any room. Well, create a, a sub-menu that says media and underneath is podcast, video series, blog, you know, whatever. But make sure it's included there. Now, you also have a footer menu on your every web page at the bottom. There's a footer that repeats on every page traditionally has your privacy policy and your terms of use, your copyright statement, your social media icons. Well, make sure, if you can, there's a link to your podcast page on that footer as well. So if somebody gets to the bottom of your page, whatever page they're reading, and they're intrigued and they want more information and they, they don't know you do a podcast and all of a sudden they see it on the bottom, they're going to go, oh, they have a podcast. Great. Let me go there. So give them that opportunity if you can, if it's possible and if it fits with what your other plans are for your website. So I hope this has been valuable for you. Um, I have a free gift for you today. It's a guide containing info on five website secrets to make sure your ideal customers find you. So you can go to www.dmillet.com slash F-I-V-E and you can sign up and download. You'll get an email with a link to download the PDF of this five secrets. It's really a great document. I think you'll get a lot out of it. Now, while you're writing that down, I'm going to tell you what I do. I work with folks to set up their technology. I build websites. I help with their um, product builds and courses. I help do automations and email campaigns and, and things that work in the background and pipelines to process opt-ins and checkouts and all that stuff. If you'd like more information, please visit my website at dmalay.com and there's connection there for email or you schedule an appointment with me or whatever it is you need to speak to or go to my any of my social media pages and leave me a note or a message. I'll be happy to get back to you. And thank you. I'm so glad you could join me for this episode of Marketing Matters. I know how precious your time is, and my hope is you came away from the show with one or two nuggets that can apply to your business. My aim is to provide clear and useful info for you so that you can have a thriving business, amazing relationships with your customers and clients. And as always, if you have any questions, go to my website at dmalay.com or go to my show Facebook page, Marketing Matters Show. Um, and the link for everything is all connected. So thank you so much. And I'm so glad you could join me. Have a great day.